Hi everybody, hope you're well. Now this is a video which we've been asked a lot about since we've picked up this caravan. What's it like having an eight foot wide caravan? What's it like towing it? What's it like storing it? What's it like camping with it? What's it like living with it? Um, so we've done a few trips now. Um, I've taken this thing out on a few roads and I think I'm in a position now to give answers to a lot of the questions which we've been asked. And the purpose of this video is to give information for people who are curious about eight foot wide, who are considering changing to a bigger caravan, um, and also people who are just, you know, really interested in, in bigger vans in general. Um, certainly from somebody who's come from a fairly narrow van before to this one, what have our thoughts been of it so far? And how have we really genuinely coped with it going down different types of roads? So if you own an eight foot wide caravan, why don't you put in the comments down below your genuine thoughts about having an eight foot wide van, if you've gone from a smaller van to a bigger van, what your thoughts are, so that anybody else who's interested and considering swapping to an, an eight foot wide, uh, they can have a look to see other people's inputs and thoughts and feedback. So, you know, it's open for everybody to join in the conversation. So I split this video down into different areas and the first one we're gonna tackle is towing. So towing the eight foot wide caravan. I made no secret of the fact that when we first picked this van up, I was incredibly anxious and a little bit nervous about towing uh, an eight foot wide for the first time. Our previous caravan was seven foot four. The Ridgeway was considerably narrower than this one. In fact, it was narrower than our uh, Luna that we had as our very first caravan, that being seven foot six. So I was a little bit nervous um, how it was going to be, how it was going to handle, how I was going to cope with it going down um, a, a B road, around a roundabout, getting through some fairly tight gates to get into the storage. That was my very first trip I made with this caravan from the dealership to the storage. So in preparation for that, I went out and I bought extension bars for my towing mirrors. Um, then it was the Malenko Series 3 Grand Aero. You can buy the extension bars so that you're legal for when you're towing. So I went ahead and did that, put the mirrors on, hitched up and pulled out of the dealership. The very first thing I noticed was it really didn't feel that much different. Um, my anxiety dropped when I actually pulled out onto the main road um, because I very quickly realized that the caravan wasn't that much bigger than the car. The width either side of the car is a staggering 10 centimeters. That's just that much. The overall width difference between this van and our Ridgeway is 20 centimeters. That's how big it is. Unbelievably, I was immediately relieved and surprised that actually that enormous width in my head you know when you first buy a car you, you feel that you, you don't know where your corners are you, you think that the, the car is 17 meters wide and 104 miles long i had that in my head that that was how it was so by the time i got to storage i was really relieved in fact that it was actually no different um when it came to our first trip when we went to morton the marsh i picked a route that took us down um some a roads the motorway the dual carriageway, some windy B roads, and then finally around the campsite. And on each road surface, this is what I found. On the A roads, no difference. Maybe a little bit closer to the curb, but certainly nowhere near as uh, in the hedgerows that I thought I was going to be traveling down the A roads to avoid traffic coming the other way. On the motorways, what I did notice was I filled the carriageway a little bit more but actually what was happening was I was riding the ruts um, on the motorway. Round here, the ruts are terrible on the M4. Um, so I was riding the ruts a little bit more evenly. So I wasn't popping in and popping out, which was always happening with our uh, previous caravan. Um, I was riding them. Being the twin axle, it didn't have that, that pivot in the middle as much as a single axle. Um, I mean, it was still there, but it's nowhere near as bad. On the dual carriageway, it again was absolutely fine. And honestly, by the time we got to Morton and Marsh, the caravan was a heck of a lot smaller in my mind than what it was when we set off. I mentioned that the car and the caravan were not pivoting as bad as a, a single axle, and that was immediately obvious to Angela. She noticed it as soon as she got in the car when we went to Morton and the Marsh. She said, this is a lot smoother. And I attribute that not because it's eight foot wide, I attribute that because of it being a twin axle. That pivot that you would always get in the center 
you know, that being the caravan hitched up to the car, it would always be doing that because it's a single axle and it wants to pivot all the time. That is very much reduced, almost, almost gone. I mean, you, you can still feel it's there because it's pulling a little bit, but it's really dampened out. It's a lot, lot less. It's not as noticeable. On a smooth main trunk road, like a motorway or an A road, it is incredibly smooth. It's really lovely. Now, on our first trip away, we made sure our nose weight was about 108 kilograms. And that we thought was perfect. It was between the 5 and the 7% recommendation of what the nose weight should be. And we've subsequently adjusted it now, so we're about 110 kilos on our nose weight. And that feels fine. I know it's heavier, I know it's a bigger van, and I know that the car can take it. For reference, our car has a towing capacity of 3.5 tonnes and it has a S max value of 140 on the tow bar. So we're well within tolerances of everything here in the caravan. 110 kilos is absolutely spot on. It feels smooth, it feels nice. There's no tail wag at all. It's a really nice towing setup. So another area that you may want to consider is if you keep your caravan in storage. We obviously keep our van in storage, but we had to ask if we could move to a different area within the storage yard because our previous uh, pitch would have been too narrow to accommodate an eight foot wide caravan. It was wide enough to take a seven foot six and walking room around it, but eight foot wide, no, it would never have fitted into that area. So we had to ask to move to a different area. Now we did that some time ago, in fact, with the Ridgeway. We were able to move to another part of the storage yard, which allowed wider zones, wider areas, and that's worked out really well for us. Yep. So make sure that in your storage yard, you're able to store an eight foot wide caravan. Make sure that the landowner is happy for you to store it as well, because I have heard stories that some storage sites don't allow eight foot wides. God knows why, but apparently they do. Um, and make sure that access in and out, if you've got tight gate posts, etc., make sure that you're okay getting in and out. But don't be too concerned because, like I said, it's only going to be that much wider each side of the car. Just a little bit more thinking about if you're having to negotiate around tight gate posts. So another area which is of concern to a lot of people is what's it like navigating around a campsite. Now we've done a few nights away in this caravan. We've done, um, I think, we've done a fair few nights now. We've traveled about 400 miles in it already since January. Um, and I will say that navigating around a campsite, even a fairly tight campsite, is absolutely no issues at all. You may recall that some weeks ago, a couple of months ago, we went to Sirencester. And if you have subscribed to our channel for any period of time, you would know that they have a re- uh, they recently redid the entrance to the Sirencester Park campsite and I covered that in a video some years ago because they put boulders out and they made it very narrow and it was quite a tricky access into the campsite. Angela was more concerned about it than me but I managed to navigate my way through that with absolutely no worries at all. The caravan just followed me wherever I went. Um, the great thing about having really wide mirrors is they're a little bit like cat's whiskers. If the mirrors can get through, the van's going to get through. So you know that access is absolutely fine. Um, in terms of navigating around um, a fairly single track, tight, uh, windy road, I have found it no issues at all. The only thing I will say is maybe the twin axle wants to hug the corners a little bit more than the single axles. They just take your corners a little bit wider and you've got no issues at all. Getting onto the pitches, again, no different. Maybe because it's a, a twin axle than a single axle, it's a little bit more stubborn to reverse onto the pitch, um, but that can work in your advantage because it's slower, it's more predictable, it doesn't want to jackknife as quickly. It's a slower process, and I have found that that's been fine. Um, in terms of width on the pitches, well, as you well know, we go primarily to Caravan and Motorhome Club sites, big sites. Um, and I have found that on those pitches with the twin peg system, the caravan slots in with ample amount, uh, amounts of space either side. There are pitches which are a little bit narrower, which allow you for a caravan and a car each side. Um, that would be a little bit tricky, but I think the car would have to stay at the front of the caravan. So here's my conclusion. If you are considering an eight foot wide, if you're thinking about it, even if you are just toying with the idea and not really committed to it, just go and do it. 
I've been able to do everything that we did with our single axle. There's no limitation here whatsoever. Navigating down the roads has been absolutely fine. Um, up here at the moment, there's some traffic works on the A road, which are quite tight. So you've got to pull over to a single lane. Um, they're quite tight. The bollards are not where they should be. Again, I had no problems at all. It really isn't that much bigger when you consider it. Like I said, this caravan is that much wider. That's 20 centimeters, that much wider than our previous caravan. The length, by the way, is half a meter longer than our previous caravan. But the caravan feels so much bigger. It gives you so much more space, that little bit extra in width. It gives you so much more living space. So if you are thinking about it, if you're even if towing with the idea of, oh, I don't know, I don't know, just do it. It's absolutely fantastic. There is no reason not to consider it if you're in the mood for an eight foot wide caravan. So I hope that has answered some of your questions. Now, if you do have any more questions, put them in the comments down below. Um, I'll be happy to answer them and I'll bring these up as a future Q&A video as well, uh, because there'll be lots of questions that you'll have no doubt about having an eight foot wide. And there'll be things that I haven't covered in this video, which you will want to know more information about. But like I said, if you own an eight foot wide, if you've just upgraded to an eight foot wide, please put your thoughts and your findings and your experiences so far of having a wider caravan in the comments down below so that everybody else can read them and hopefully we can make somebody's mind up and they won't regret the choice of going forward with a bigger caravan so that's it from me today a huge thank you for watching please do hit the subscribe button hit the notification icon and if you can do all of that and maybe if i'm back in time i'll get another video out for next week many thanks for watching everybody take care bye bye